Terry with the Quarter Acre and I am here to talk to you about learn math fast. That's what everybody wants to do, right? Is learn math fast. Um, my son went to public school from kindergarten through sixth grade and when it came to math, his education had some potholes. So some places where, and this is super common, where the class moved on, but he wasn't quite ready to move on and, um, and learn a new concept. So when we decided that distance learning wasn't gonna be a fit for our family and we needed to homeschool this year, I spent hours looking for a math curriculum that he could move through at his own pace. Some things he had down, no problem. Other things he struggled with. So I wanted to find something that was really self-paced but was gonna start all the way back at the beginning and catch him up um, where he needed to. Just kind of fill in, like I said, those potholes. So we settled on the Learn Math Fast system. So here it is. This is book uh, volume one and volume two. So this is where he started and this is where we are now this year. So he completed this book um, back around, I want to say Thanksgiving is, is around when he finished it. But I mean, it really does start at the beginning. So just to give you an idea, lesson one is adding and subtracting numbers up to five. Okay, so for a seventh grader, that was super easy. And to be honest, this was perfect because it built self-efficacy. So self-efficacy is that belief in yourself that you can do it because he had for years felt like he, he wasn't good at math. He couldn't do it. I can't. Nope. I don't know how. I don't get it. I didn't learn how to do this. So now I can't do that. And I get that. It's hard when you don't have the foundational principles to grasp new math concepts. Like I, I totally get where he was coming from, but at the same time, I was like, how do I help him? <laughs> how do I help him? So starting all the way back at the beginning um, with sub adding and subtracting to up to five, the next one was adding and subtracting up to six, then adding and subtracting up to seven was great because he was like, I got this. This math is easy. I can do this math. He felt like he, almost like he was getting away with something that <laughs> he wasn't having to do difficult math. Um, and so he breezed through the first portion and that really built his confidence and that was one of the goals this year was to build some math confidence and he's got a lot more math confidence now than he ever had before and so we would take on more than one lesson a day uh, in the beginning as we picked up speed and then when we hit an area that was more difficult like uh, math multiplication facts we would stop for a while we actually stopped for an entire month and focused on math multiplication facts and getting those down because that wasn't something that he he had. But now he's got, I would say, 80% of his math uh, facts. And to be honest, I don't think I have all my math facts <laughs> uh, memorized. You know what I mean? I have little tricks like 7 times 8. I'm like, well, 7 times 7 is 49. Two, three, four, five, fifty-six. Okay, like I can figure it out. Like I have enough. I know the the twos is doubling, fives trick, the nines trick, the tens trick, the elevens trick, and from there I can you know figure things out. But he's got got them down um, pretty well. So we still review and work on that. I am a big believer, and if you don't use it, you lose it. So we make sure that we revisit, but this has multiplying, it goes through multiplying place value to a billion, uh, greater than, less than decimal points, multiplying and division with decimal points and fractional remainders and dividing decimals. I mean, it's got, hold on. it's got a lot. So it goes all the way through and there's tests all the way along. And the cool thing is, is it explains everything and it uses change as manipulatives, which is great. And so the way that I utilized it is he had to pass. So he had to have a C or better to move on. So like, you know, here's just 
You can see some of his work and he would do a couple a day or he would do um, a couple lessons a day or he would do one a day if it was a challenge. Um, and yeah, it, it worked out really well for us. He finished that one and moved on to volume two. And this one talks about fractions, um, least common multiples, multiplying and dividing fractions, improper fractions, subtracting and adding fractions, cross-canceling, all that fun stuff, decimal numbers, percentages, um, and we're almost done with this book actually, adding negative numbers, subtracting negative numbers, multiplying and dividing them, etc. So, um, and like I said, the format is, let's look at, so this is, I'll take you through a lesson. This is lesson 10, what it looks like. It's improper fractions and mixed numbers. And so it gives you written instructions on how to do it. And um, it also gives you some visuals. It's all black and white. There's no color. So it's not, um, it's not beautiful but it's very functional. And I find with math, with my son, and, and this may be true for a lot of people, and I think it's probably true for me, while I enjoy things that are beautiful, like the good and the beautiful language arts, we love that. The handwriting, the creative writing, the typing, I love that it's so pretty. For me and for my son, having no distractions on the page is better for our brains. It's just what it is and nothing else. It, it just focuses in solely on math. I love that the good and the beautiful like this geography, grammar, spelling, uh, uh, art, appreciation, etc. in their language arts. And it's so many things wrapped up into one. That works great for that subject. But for math, I really like that it is just what it is. You're taking one bite at a time. Um, my husband always uses the expression, how do you eat a whole whale or a whole elephant one bite at a time? So the idea of catching up his entire elementary school math career in one year, that's an elephant. Um, but thanks to the Learn Math Fast, it's, it's been one bite at a time and we have gotten there. Um, when he finishes this book, which he will um, probably in the, say in the next month, he'll be done with this. He'll move on to the next book, which is pre-algebra, which is what he should be learning in seventh grade. And so I have no doubt that he will, um, with finishing out the rest of the year with pre-algebra, um, March and April, and then um, doing one lesson a week instead of one lesson a day, doing one lesson a week over the summer, um, to give him a little bit of a break, but still staying on the learning train, um, I have no doubt that he'll be caught up with what his contemporaries uh, learned this year. And so I cannot endorse them enough, Learn Math Fast. It's not for everyone. I would not use this with my daughter who is in first grade, um, who's learning concepts for the first time um, at a young age. Uh, I feel like it might not be the most appropriate um, I feel like I would have to supplement a lot and it would be very, very heavy because it's just, it's written in a very no nonsense way, which is good for my son. And I mean, it does have visuals. I don't know what that was. Um, it does have visuals, but, um, it's not as soft as a, an approach as, that I would use. It's not as soft of an approach that I, like as what I would use with my daughter who's younger um, and just has a different learning style. That's the thing. This may work phenomenal for my son and you know, you may try it and go, mm, I don't know. But there's a lot of people who swear by other math programs that I look at and I'm like, oh, that would not work for us. Or like online math, I'm like, no, he's got to see it, feel it, touch it type of thing. So what is your kid's math learning style? What is your math learning style? Do you know? I didn't really realize it until I started looking at curriculum for my kids, what I needed to learn, um, because I started seeing how different their learning styles were. Um, it's 
it's really cool. So do you know your math learning style? Do you know your kids math learning style? Um, let me know in the comment section down below. I am not sponsored. I need to say that I am not sponsored by learn math. I've paid for all of these on my own. I get them from Amazon. So we have volumes three, four, and five on deck for as soon as he finishes up volume two. And I'm just really impressed with the math curriculum and it's, it's old school math. So there's no arrays. There's no, um, 10 frames and, and whatnot we ran into in public school. He brought home a piece of paper. He was so upset and it was division. And one of the problems, I will never forget this, uh, all the problems were marked wrong, but the answers were all correct. And what it what had happened was he had come home and said, Mom, I need to do these problems, but I have to draw out the problem. And I'm like, what do you mean draw out the problem? And he goes, well, the problem is 81 divided by 9. I need to draw 81 circles and put them in groups of 9. And I said, that's ridiculous. That cannot be the way they want you to do that, the 81 circles, I can understand that with a smaller number, but 81, and I think there was three or four problems on the page, and like one had 45 circles he would have to draw, and one had like 60 circles or something, and then one had the 81. And I was like, there's no way I can't do that. So I taught him how to do it the traditional way, you know, nine into 81, and he got it. It clicked, and he, he did the work with me, and he took it in, and he brought it back and they were all marked wrong because even though the answers were correct and he showed his work, it wasn't the right work. He was supposed to draw those 81 circles and put them in groups of nine. And after that, we ended up getting an IEP for him that said he can do the math in whatever way he chooses, whatever method works for him. And so we have found that the old school math that contains less steps works better for him. So this is the old school math. It is not common core. It's not. And that's kind of one of the reasons I love it. Um, is that it, it's just, it's the more, uh, the shorter distance between two points way of doing math. And I get that common core is supposed to teach them to look at things differently and conceptualize and and all this. And I know that there are some people who adore Common Core and there are some kids that it just works for. Um, that has not been the case for, uh, for my son. And, um, and my daughter digs the old school math too. So, uh, less margin for error. The less steps that, that I give them to get to the answer, the less chance there is to make one of those little silly off by one mistakes. So like in the, situation with the draw 81 circles and group them by nine. What if the kid gets distracted by somebody sharpening their pencil or they have to stop and go to the bathroom and come back and they've forgotten how many they have to count or how many they've already done. And so they have to go back and count. What if they make an error and they draw 72 circles or, you know, 82 circles or whatever it is. There's so much margin for error there, and there's so much time. I can't. My words to the teacher were, if I went to work and my boss said, we have 81 products, we need to fit them on nine pallets, how many is that per, per pallet? And I said, hold on, let me draw 81 circles and group them by nine. Give me a minute or 10. I would be fired. So for me, the shortest distance between two points is the way that I want to teach them because that's what they're going to use in the real world. Um, they're not going to need to draw out 81 circles and don't get me wrong. I loved his teacher. I love, I, 90% of my kids teachers were phenomenal, but their hands are tied. They have a curriculum that's assigned to them. That's chosen by someone usually other than the teachers the school district, the state, there's all these hoops that they have to jump to, these boxes that they have to check. The beauty of homeschooling, at least in my state, is I don't have to. I don't have to go by what, you know, what what they're saying is best for my child. I can really do what's best for my kid. Um, and that includes old math. 
So that is my review for Learn Math Fast and my soapbox spiel <laughs> about um, Common Core. I guess now you know how I really feel. Don't get me wrong, they're, like I said, every kid is different. My daughter, this would not work for her. But for my son who needed to catch up and who needed to have it plain and simple and black and white, this is perfect. It's, and it's very self-led and it comes with an answer sheet in the back or an answer key. I've ripped it out and I keep it under my planner here in front of me so that when he's done with his math, he can pass it to me. I can correct it right then and we can go over any mistakes. So what is your math learning style? Tell me in the comment section down below and I am so glad you came by and I hope that you'll stop by again and have a great rest of your day and be blessed.